We are living in an online world. During the pandemic, we were forced to start using technologies in all aspects of our lives. Our studies, work, shopping, entertainment. But also a big part of our private life moved online. But how to balance between online life and the real one? And how to move our business steps to be more effective in an online retail segment which is so important for young fashion designers? These questions will be answered by our guests. Currently, we live in the world where almost everybody is connected. So I think we have to stop thinking about online and offline anymore. We can't distinguish those two as two separate entities. We need to really start looking at those as one existing ecosystem. So for example, when you're developing a marketing strategy for your brand, it's not anymore what we do online and what we do offline, but those two need to create an omnichannel strategy where you really communicate with your possible customer on all different channels. Největší pozitivum, který právě na, tom, na tomhle vnímám, je ta skutečnost, že se tam vlastně nachází ten náš cílový, ten náš cílový zákazník. To v dnešní době už máme technologie, vďaka kterým dokážeme vytvořit fotorealistickou vizuální prezentaci nějakého fyzického artefaktu, který ještě neexistuje. A to je z mého pohledu obrovská změna, která má velké dopady, má například velký ekonomický dopad na, na celý ten proces, aj co se týká oděvové módy, protože vyprodukovat a potom aj transportovat nějaký nějak, digitální produkt je daleko jednodušší, daleko lacnější, než v případě prostě nějakého fyzického předmětu. Takisto to má dopad na, na ekologii například, protože takisto opět produkcia a transport zanechávají, prostě mají daleko nižší stopu ekologickou. No a okrem toho je tu ještě ten aspekt, že vlastně díky týmto technologiám dostává možnost prejavit se nějakým kreativním způsobem v podstatě každý z nás. Protože už není potřebné mít všechny ty předpoklady, či už zručnostné nebo materiální. Díky digitálním technologiám dokáže hoci kdo zrealizovat svou představu a Ide potom už len o to, či ten výsledok naozaj zaujíma aj ostatných, alebo nie. I see many positives in new technologies because I think that everything is much more easier and quicker and you can create almost everything what you can imagine. For example me, I started to make my own patterns. I started to make my own videos. I learned how to make uh, e-shop. I learned how to make my own websites and uh, I do a lot of things by myself because it's easy with those new technologies. Every topic has two perspectives, how you can look, for, look at it. So for example, the time we spend online, you know, it's a great opportunity to, co to connect with anybody in the world. I mean, literally, you can reach out just right now to the editor-in-chief of ID Magazine and get your work published. But at the same time, if you look at the mental health issues, which a constant connection and constant pressure from the connection is causing us, it's really dangerous. So I think you have to be really mindful when it comes to everything. And you have to be very mindful when you look at all your business approach. So for example, if you start, uh, start selling fast fashion, you need to really think about what you're causing to the world. On the other side, you can make a lot of money. If you decide to create your collections in a very sustainable way, and if you decide to create your communication in a very sustainable way, you need to understand that means you don't have enough touch points maybe with your customer. So you really need to understand what are the upsides and the downsides of your each business decision and how it's affecting the whole thing. I think that online svet bol sám o sebe nebezpečný, pretože čo sa týka práve tej kreativity, mám pocit, že funguje taká nejaká samoregulácia. Keby som skúsil uvieť dva príklady, jeden bol vtedy, keď vlastne skončila éra analogovej fotografie a rozšírili sa digitálne fotoaparáty a zrazu mal každý pocit, že proste musí v každom momente urobiť nejakú fotku. Tých fotiek začalo vznikať strašne veľa a začali byť zdieľané na internete. 
a v zápätí vznikli platformy, ktoré nejakým spôsobom začali organizovať a filtrovať tento obsah a nejakým spôsobom sa, tá, sa opäť nastavila nejaká rovnováha medzi, medzi tým produkovaním toho, toho digitálneho obsahu a medzi jeho konzumentami. Neskôr sa stalo niečo veľmi podobné s príchodom mobilných telefónov, respektive smartfónov, kde vlastne v podstate dnes každý z nás zo sebou nosí relatívne kvalitnú digitálnu kameru. Napriek tomu to z nás neurobilo filmových režisérov. Proste opäť aj tu ľudia začali zaplňať internetové platformy obsahom, ktorý ale nejakým spôsobom nič nové neprinášal. A z môjho pohľadu každá nová ďalšia technológia, ako som spomínal, technológia, ktorá napríklad teraz umožňuje vytvárať digitálne oblečenie komukoľvek, tak ten, ten proces môže byť veľmi podobný. Začne sa taká obdobia, obdobie nadprodukcie, kedy každý bude mať pocit, že dokáže byť umelec a dizajner a následne príde, prídu platformy, kde sa vytvorí opäť nejaká rovnováha medzi tými ľuďmi, ktorí produkujú a medzi tými ľuďmi, ktorí konzumujú ten digitálny obsah. Takže ja naozaj verím, že ten online svet, že vlastne tie technológie sú len nejaký nástroj, ktoré nám nielen pomáhajú začať tým, že vytvárame strašné množstvo toho obsahu, ale následne nám pomôžu ten obsah proste organizovať, filtrovať a oddeliť to, čo proste je kvalitné od toho zvyšku. When you live in an online world, so you can start to be depressed. Depressed because everything looks so perfectly. People are perfect in online world. And you just simply want to be perfect as well. But reality is absolutely different. As a Google lead mentor for Europe and Africa, I meet more than 300 tech companies a year. And what I think uh, is connecting all those business leaders is really one thing, and it's driving force is curiosity. And for me, it's not new technology or old technology. It's just like the world around us is evolving constantly. And the same way have you have fashion trends and there are, you know, a neon coming on and volup, I don't, volume or I don't know anything. The same technology is emerging and you're really like looking at it and emerging into it and making a research what can fit into your brand and not. And that's kind of good driving me back to the basics. I think as a founder of a brand, you really need to understand your DNA. You really need to understand what you're after, what you stand for, what are your values. And then as a cherry pick, really decide what would work for your brand. So it's not jumping on TikTok or VR fashion or anything just because it's out there. It's deciding what would work for you, what would work for your customer, what would you work for your business model and then going after that. So keeping that curiosity, having that approach where you really understand what's happening, but at the same time deciding what is best for you and what is best for your customer. Uh, tak já vám prozradím jedno malé tajemství <laughs> a to je to, že uh, v dnešní době opravdu je těch trendů a těch platform tak strašně moc, že není jako reálný, aby to člověk z, uh, zvládal jako odbavovat všechno, jo? to je spíš jako full time, full time job a je to jako by práce pro agenturu. Takže já si myslím, že je vždycky jako velmi důležitý se spíš zaměřit na to, uh, jaká ta platforma je vlastně nejhodnotnější, nejzajímavější pro vás, jako pro toho tvůrce a do té vložit maximální množství té svojí energie. Myslím si, že momentálně třeba pro modní návrháře bude nejzajímavější asi Instagram, takže bych se možná i klidně jako ráda podělila o takový čtyři typy, které by jim v té, v té tvorbě mohly, mohly pomoci. První doporučení je konzistentnost, protože algoritmus Instagramu opravdu jakoby miluje konzistentní obsah, takže je podstatný si nastavit takovou četnost příspěvku, takový množství příspěvku, který my jsme schopní jako reálně dále jakoby dodržovat a opravdu na sebe být, na sebe být přísný a, a snažit se to dodržovat. Protože ten Instagram se nám za to potom jakoby odmění formou toho, že nás bude víc doručovat, budeme se líp zobrazovat a, a podobně. 
A jestli můžu doporučit jako něco já za sebe, tak je to aktivní využívání těch funkcí, které vlastně Instagram nabízí. Ať už to jsou anketní tlačítka v rámci Stories, ať je to Instagram průvodce, který vlastně může sloužit jako skvělej, skvělá vlastně prezentace, třeba nějaký kolekce jako by pro toho navrháře. to svým způsobem to supluje vlastně třeba blogový článek. Jo? A uh, určitě jakoby, využívat fakt tyhle ty, jako aktuální, aktuální věci, které se tam, tam dějí, které ten Instagram jako tlačí, uh, tlačí dopředu a bude nám to prostě, bude nám to prostě k plusu. Uh, třetí tip je obecně video obsah a Instagram Reels, uh, protože je tady taková predikce, že uh, v roce 2022 bude až 80 obsahu na sociálních sítích vlastně tvořit jakoby, video content a uh, je fajn mít tohleto na paměti a aby tvůrci už s tím jako začali jako aktivně, aktivně pracovat. A poslední, často jako opomíjený téma, ale je to hrozně důležitý, je ten community management. Je to nějaká vlastně práce s tou vaší fanouškovskou základnou. Jo, ať schválně si tvůrce jeden den třeba zkusí místo děkuju odpovídat na komentáře otázkou. Jo, a, a uvidíte, co to vlastně s tím, s tím vláknem komunikačním jako je schopný jako, jako udělat, jak se vám to potom vrátí třeba v soukromých zprávách a podobně. You can't be afraid to use social media. You just simply need it for your business, for your brand, for your products. When you don't push your business and products through social media like a, a Instagram, TikTok and and so on. So you you can't sell your products. Your customers are on so, social media. So you need to learn it and you simply need to do this. How to find the right balance? We can get inspiration from England's children commissioner who created Digital 5A Day. Easy to follow practical steps to navigate safely online and achieve a healthy and balanced digital diet. Connect recognizes how the internet has enabled the maintenance of friendship and family relationships. Be Active emphasizes that all children should have time to switch off and get moving, with too much time online often resulting in children feeling grumpy, tired and stressed. Get Creative highlights the Internet's ability to provide children with opportunities to learn and to be creative. Give to others includes posting positive messages, reporting hateful comments, blocking trolls and not sharing content that is fake or might hurt others. Be mindful underscores that children often feel pressured by the constantly connected nature of the internet and that it can be difficult for them to put their phones down when apps are encouraging them to engage. This video is closed with inspirational words of leadership coach Barry Maddox. Barry is helping leaders to create change. Hi, my name is Barry Maddox and I'm passionate about leaders for good. I'm passionate about helping other people to become leaders, to become better leaders and to create impact in this world when we need it most. In my day job, I'm the CEO for All Hands and Hearts, a global organization for disaster relief powered by volunteers who lead change in communities in need all around the world. And in my free time, I run a thought leadership initiative called Just Open Leaders and a blog um, which helps young leaders to get on in their careers, to learn um, key leadership lessons and to grow your impact, right? So it's a real pleasure to talk to you all today because I know you're up and coming leaders. And I want to talk to you about a really important element of leadership, collaboration. Because friends, we need to bury the notion of the single leader, of the macho leader who sits behind their desk in a big, you know, tower and wears power suits and makes all the decisions. The archetype of the hero leader is poison. The individual leader who's better than you and me, who doesn't share, who doesn't collaborate, that's for the movies, but it's not for real life. If we as humanity are to rise to the challenges of climate crisis, of poverty, of migration, it's not going to happen from one leader alone. It's going to happen because we all collaborate. And that's why I'm really excited to talk to you as a, as a group of up and coming leaders in the fashion accelerator because you have the chance to collaborate 
and to work together. And that's the opposite of the hero archetype. It's, co it's the collaborative leader. The best leaders in this world are collaborators because they know none of us have all the answers, that no one viewpoint is ever gonna be sufficient in all the different areas of our world and life in which we work, and that we do better when we come together. So if you wanna collaborate well, a couple, uh, a couple pointers. First, collaboration isn't for every exercise. If it's a simple problem or a relationship that doesn't really matter much, don't spend the time intensive process of collaborating. Do something quick, make an easy decision. You don't always collaborate, but when you do collaborate, make sure you're doing it around the most important issues, okay? Around the most important relationships where the investment of coming together is worth it. Because when you come together, the first thing you need to do is listen. And it's really important that you take time to listen to understand, not to respond. So many times in a conversation, we listen thinking about what we're going to say. And the best leaders listen not just to what the other person's saying, but they listen to how they're saying it. And they try to work out why they're saying it. Listen to understand. Second, share your fire, share your passion, share your ideas. Okay, this is a two-way exchange. Tell them what you know. Tell them what you're proud of. Tell them what you believe and share that passion, that excitement. The more you share, the more you understand, the better you both can come together to create win-win solutions ideas and opportunities that you wouldn't have come up with by yourself. Okay, and that's the heart of collaboration, right? And that's really how we make a difference as leaders. Bringing many people together to get a better outcome together. Anybody can do it alone, okay? But you're not gonna do it well. And where you are as up and coming designers, you have the ability to come together with each other to create something totally new. Okay, to share ideas, to share generously, to learn together, to grow together with the amazing networks uh, that you're gonna have through this accelerator, it is a chance to collaborate and to come out better and to create better products. Better products, better ideas, better inspiration for all of us. So don't try to do it alone because nobody actually does. Okay, look for the people who will collaborate with you and collaborate well by listening to understand, by bringing your fire and your passion and looking for win-win for solutions. Okay, because that's what we've all got to do in this world. Leadership's not about title and it's not about your role. It's about one thing, your ability to influence others. You don't need power. You don't need to be 50 years in the, in the field to do that. If you collaborate well, you can influence now. And most importantly, you're gonna come up with better ideas. That's why I'm, I'm filming this video. I mean, you are creative people. I believe that creatives are the best leaders because they don't accept the problem for what it is. They think about things in different ways and I think are predisposed to better collaboration, to making the sum of the parts bigger. So I really encourage you to, to think about this theme of, of collaboration um, and you know, to tap into your innate creativity as the missing piece of the puzzle. So many of us out there need your energy, need your vision, um, and I can't wait to see what comes from this accelerator. So thanks for listening. Take care.